Hello and welcome to the first in our series of webcast videos on the topic of Zazen Contact. The aim of this series is to uh, try and create a link between the three-dimensional explanation of the principles and how it links with the two-dimensional procedure that you're going to be doing on your sheet. So to try and give a better understanding of what it is you're actually doing and how you actually go about solving the questions. Most of the principles that we're going to encounter for this series are going to be based upon our, orthogra our principles of our orthographic that we would have seen previously. So really it's the same principles maybe dressed up in a new suit. So for this specific video we're going to look at the principle involved of how do we determine what it is we see when we're looking at a solid. So the solids that we're going to deal with for this video are going to be curved solids which is a sphere and a cone. So, by way of explaining what it is when we see, if we take the example here of a sphere, here we have our setup, we have our vertical plane, so our, which acts as our back wall that we're going to project onto for our front elevation. Here we have our plan view, which represents the ground, so that's our horizontal plane. Over here we have our two-dimensional view, so th here's where our front elevation is going to go. Here we have our plan view, um, where we have our sphere already in place. So when it comes to looking at a solid, say a sphere like this, well, we all know that if you say take the likes of a football, well, whatever direction you look at the football from, you're always going to see the outline of a circle. So what we're going to look at is how do we know where that outline is in relation to our orthographic view, so our plan and our elevation. So in order to determine what it is we're going to see, we can just imagine standing in front of the object here. Here we are standing in front of the object, and as I look in the object, if you can imagine turning on a torch and shining a light on the sphere. If we turned on our torch, the front half of the object is going to be lit up, and we can see the back half of the object here is going to be in shade. And if you look as well, this rim here that we can see that separates the front and the back, well that rim there is going to be the outline that you're going to see. So as we look at that object, this circle here is going to uh, give us the outline of the object. So that rim there is going to be projected then onto our vertical plane, giving us our front elevation. Now, we have a specific name for this rim here, and it's known as the extreme generator. So the extreme generator is the outermost part of our solid that is going to determine the outline that we see for either our, whichever view we're going to be looking at. So that's our extreme generator. Now if we go over here and have a look at our two dimensions, we can see here we have the outline of our extreme generator in our front elevation, giving us the circle that we were expecting to see. But if we look down here in our plan view, we can see here's the front half of our solid, which is in light, and here's the back half of our object, which is in shade. And the circle that we see here, the rim that determines the outline, well that's seen here as a straight line. If we look closer at the straight line, we can see that the straight line is not only does it appear straight, we know that it's curved, but it's also going through the center. And if we take a closer look again, we can see that it's perpendicular to the direction that we're looking in at. And there are actually some, there are a series of rules that if you want to work out the position of this extreme generator when you look at an object, well, the extreme generator is going to be perpendicular to your line of sight and it's going to be traveling through the center of the object. So that's going to be our extreme generator. And you can see there's our extreme generator is giving us the outline view, or the edge view we call it, um, for our front elevation. So this applies no matter what direction we're looking at our object. If we take, say, for example, the plan view. So in our plan view, we're looking from above. So here we are looking from above the object. In this case, again, if we shine our torch, we can see that the top half becomes in light. The bottom half here is in shade, and the line that separates the two, or the circle that separates the two, our extreme generator, this time is around the waist of the sphere, a little bit like the equator of the Earth. So let's go back over here to our 2D view. This time we're looking from above in our front elevation, but the same principles apply. Here's the location of our extreme generator. So the outline that we see in our plan view this time is located along our straight line here, Again, going through the center of our front elevation and going perpendicular to the viewing direction. So this rim that we see here, there it is in plan, it appears as a circle. In our front elevation, it appears as a, a straight line. 
and this will work no matter what direction we look at the object. So if we were to imagine looking at it from say walking around the object like so, if we have a new direction the same thing applies. The front portion here is in light, the back portion is in shade. We have a new position for our extreme generator and because we're looking at it from a new direction we're going to have a new plane to project on. So that will be a, the likes of an auxiliary plane. So we can still see that the extreme generator that we have here, this rim separating the light from the dark, is still going to give us the outline that we have in our auxiliary. So no matter what direction we are looking at the object from, we now know how where we're getting the outline from. So go over here to our 2D view, we can see if we were standing in front of the object, as we would move around, we can see the position of the extreme generator is always perpendicular to the, our viewing direction. So it's, And it's always through the center. So there's our auxiliary giving us the outline, so our extreme generator in our auxiliary view, and here's the position of our extreme generator in our plan view, perpendicular to our viewing direction. So that's where we determine the extreme generator, or the where the we're getting the outline from for our sphere. The exact same thing applies when it comes to, say, the likes of a cone. So if we can imagine a cone here, a cone is made up of a series of straight lines spun around a central axis. So these are our generators of our cone. And similar enough, like with the likes of our sphere, which one of these is the uh, generator that's going to give us the edge view, so the outline that we're going to see here in our front elevation? Well, the same principle applies. As we stand looking in from the front, we can see that the front half is in light, the back half is in shade, and it's the line crossing through the center of our cone, perpendicular to our viewing direction, is going to give us the outline, as we can see here. So here we can see it in our 3D view. There's the light, there's the shade at the back, and the line separating the two is going to be projected onto our front elevation, giving us the outer edge of our object. And again, that's our extreme generator is what that's known as. So the extreme generator is the outline edge that we're going to have. All these generators that we can see here, they're all generators, but it's only the extreme generator that gives us the outline. So that's what makes that special. So this is our first video, as I say, on solids and contact. Hopefully it's been of some help to you and uh, keep um, stay tuned for more videos that come on track. So thank you very much.